Hello, Internet. Welcome to another episode of the Get Geek Podcast. This week, we're going to return to our regularly scheduled uh, geekdom and give all of you out there a little bit of what we've been geeking out about over the last couple weeks. But first, let's do the introductions. You guys know me. I'm Jose. This is Wolfie. Hey, Jane. You are. And this is Walt. Hello, gentlemen. Good afternoon. And for the fans out there, just a couple of quick reminders before we get started. Number one, uh, we are trying to be responsible with the current current COVID-19 crisis. We are socially distancing, so we are recording remotely. Um, If there are any sound issues or artifacts, we do apologize. We're doing the best that we can to try to make sure the sound is improving week by week. We think we're doing a fairly good job, but... We do appreciate those of you that are bearing with us for any sound issues that we have. And thank you very much for our fans out there that are doing that and that are listening in. Um, And of course, as always, the best way that you can support our podcast and support Geekdom in general is to uh, follow, like, share, subscribe, and rate our podcast on as many places as you possibly can. Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, um, wherever your favorite podcasts are sold. And, of course, you can check us out on Instagram at Get Geek Podcast. Um, all right. So let's jump right into the geek outs, ladies and gentlemen and germs. Um, Wolfie, why don't you get us started off, man? Actually, before the geek outs, I think that we have something to give away. That's right. Yeah. Yes. Please jump on that. Oh, so, all Woo-hoo. right. So this is our second giveaway. It's uh, been a little bit more successful than our very first one. Uh, we had... 16 entrants which was you know cool it's a respectable number and a really cool prize to give away this is the uh star wars the mandalorian pop amazon exclusive you could only get it if you pre-ordered it through amazon and it is no longer available for pre-order or for pickup at all as, as far as i'm concerned or as far as i know it is <laughs> it is number 345 and the winner of the uh, Get Geek Mandalorian Pop contest is Amy Geddon. Yeah. Uh, I assume I believe her name is Amy. Uh, I believe she's a super nerd. Uh, but cool name, Amy Geddon. We'll uh, send this out to you as soon as possible. All we request is that you take a picture, post it up, tag us, and let everyone know how cool this contest was. So we'll, uh, we have a couple more contests that are going to be coming up um, pretty soon. I've got a slew of uh, little gifts that I want to give away through the contest and all that. So super excited to get that stuff rolling. <laughs> all right. Congratulations. Um, again. All right. So while I absolutely love having a soundtrack to my life, uh, let's, uh, let's, 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 let's move on to the uh, geek outs. Wah, 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 um, wah, wah. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I have been I've been geeking out over uh, the Master Class series by uh, Neil Gaiman. So oh, cool! I've been doing the the Master Class for the last couple of weeks. I I um, uh, downloaded it and you know trying to trying to find how to be as useful as possible in in, in or at least making my time during the quarantine as useful as possible. And writing has been something that I've kind of gotten away from uh for a long time it's you know it's one of those things that i I kind of you know maybe you call it a pipe dream in my mind at least at some point i was like yeah you know what like i really always want to be a writer a creative writer a a storyteller in comics or graphic novels and that sort and for whatever reason i just didn't you know again in my mind i thought it was like maybe a pipe dream uh but i've i've never stopped thinking about like creative stories and creative writing and i've done a few a little bit of writing here and there and and then recently i had the opportunity to do uh some 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 writing as well for for a friend and um and i uh you know i really wanted to kind of get back to writing and neil gaiman being one of my favorite authors if not my favorite author i gotta say that he is my favorite i own uh i think probably like 60 percent of his collection of books uh i <laughs> read a lot of uh the, the the graphic novels and and comics that he's been involved with especially obviously sandman and i just love his writing style his style of writing is is almost as if it's an 
you know, an adult telling a story to a child during storytelling time, during like, you know, like, hey, like, tuck you in and tell him a story. I feel like when I read his words, his voice, yeah, his, his voice is as if is the voice of a storyteller, not just a writer. And, um, you know, I have like my own voice and by voice, you know, we talk about like kind of like style, writing style. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, but I've always been influenced by his voice and his style and stuff. And then his master class has been out for a while and I've always wanted to to partake in it. But I didn't really understand. I, I always looked at the master class series as like just a compilation of videos and whatnot. And, you know, I just figured it's not not that it's not worth my time, but maybe not worth the investment and so on and so forth. Mm-hmm. I downloaded the master class and it's 19 videos, uh, basically a full curriculum from beginning to end mm-hmm. on his whole processes, you know, um, his thoughts and theories on how to create good compelling stories, as well as a workbook with exercises and basically homework to do and reading work to do mm-hmm. um, all involved. So this this really felt like a full like full on like maybe I guess like a workshop class that you would do at a at a at a college, at a university, but by one of the best writers in the history of writing. It's almost like he's a visiting professor at an Ivy League college. Yeah, or something that's like that. exactly how it felt. You know what I mean? I felt that's like really I was, I, I didn't feel like he was just regurgitating his, you know, ideals on writing. I felt like he was, that he, he really put his heart and soul into teaching me um, his method of writing and, 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 and what I need to work on in order to be a good writer and develop mm-hmm. stories. And, and that's really kind of sparked, you know, this new endeavor. Um, well, I don't want to say new endeavor because I actually have started working on this project years ago um, in developing uh, 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 some, some short stories and, you know, this much grander idea for a novel or a graphic, no- or a graphic novel. Um but now that I feel like I'm a little bit more well versed, I have some exercises to refine my my writing skills and ability. Um, I feel a lot more confident. I really do feel like I can actually, you know, start and finish an actual book. And that's my new kind of life goal is to 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 finally achieve that that dream of uh, creating a novel. Whether people will read it or not, I don't know. Uh, I hope somebody would you know, read it and enjoy it. But, um, I'm, I'm, I'm 100% all in on bringing this, this wonderful story that I have in my head. At least in my mind, it's a wonderful story of, of, a of, of a child that, uh, based kind of in the real world. So it's a little bit of a depressing world, especially these days who discovers, uh, the, like the, the, the side of magic um, by befriending a ghost, so to speak. So hmm. uh, really, really, really looking forward to getting getting that story out there. So uh, I don't know how long it's going to take me, but I'm super motivated. And it's all because of the Masterclass. I've been super geeking out over the Masterclass series. And uh, I have a couple other Masterclasses that, I'm, that I've uh, downloaded that I, you know, want to uh, take the time to to, to delve into them and do the workshops and do the workbooks rather and all that. But I'm, I'm still, I'm still working through the uh, workbook of Neil mm-hmm. Gaiman's uh, master class. I'm about halfway through, which requires a lot of reading and a lot of writing and I'm committed to finishing that. So before I jump into anything else. So, but yeah, that's basically what I've been geeking out over. It's, it's, you know, reading and writing. I, and I, and as part of that, I've also, I've also been geeking out over, uh, two books that I that I picked up from Neil uh, Neil Gaiman, um, one that I already had in my collection I never actually even opened, and then another one that I also picked up. The first one is uh, Trigger Warning, and the second one is Norse Mythology. Has anybody heard those books? No, I don't. I haven't read of uh, heard of them before, but Norse Mythology kind of stands out also because I feel like he really likes to write about mythology or has the mythology in some of his books that I, that I know. At least, and, and TV shows that have, that it's been converted into, right? He absolutely yeah. loves mythology. He tries to kind of, I think, in the majority of his stories, he tries to like grab grab elements from you know different kinds of mythology. But his favorite mythology is Norse mythology. Um, okay. And American Norse gods mythology, comes to mind. But yeah, yeah. yeah. 
-hmm. Norse mythology is cool because he takes all the uh, the 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 poems and the the writings that exist on the Norse mythology, and he and he turns it into essentially a collection of short stories that tell the entire story, as as for as much as we know of you know all the gods, all the different stories, all the way from the beginning of the Norse mythology to the end of Norse mythology. So from the inception of you know Odin and how he came to be and all the other gods all the way to Ragnarok and that's been an amazing book because it's it's, it's like each chapter is essentially just a short story that moves the entire story along and then trigger warnings is a book where he it's a collection another collection of uh short stories um but the short stories are all essentially you know kind of around the idea of trigger warnings right so everyone has trigger warnings or triggers right everyone you know if uh and this is you know a little bit more of a serious book right if you've been a victim of you know some sort of physical abuse there will be a story in there that mm -hmm. will deal with that or have that as a, a subject if you've lost someone dear to you there'll be a story about that if you are an animal rights uh person there's going to be a story that's going to trigger you in that book. And the idea is kind of exploring, you know, these different types of trigger triggers um, in, in each one of the stories. Many of the stories may not trigger you at all. And then some can, but there's, you know, his idea is that every single story in there will trigger someone. And that's why the whole book is called trigger warning, you know, because he wants people to know that like, if you're going to open this book, be prepared because there will be stories on here that may trigger you <clears throat> expect to be offended but i guess that's the point he's trying to cover the the gamut of offensiveness in I, a sense. I don't, I don't maybe think not it's offensive. for it's not really offensive because he doesn't he doesn't tell the story in a way that's meant to be like offensive but like for example he, he could just be telling the story of someone that was you know a female that may have been physically abused you know the story may end you know with retribution or whatnot but the fact that the story is about that can trigger someone, mm -hmm. you know. If that so it's more on an emotional level, certainly. right? Yes, yes. It's all about triggering on an emotional level. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. I, um, I do have to, like, definitely bring up, I hope you don't mind, you did send us that really great article that you've written recently about, uh, uh -huh. I think it was a review from All Rise. Yeah, I did a review for uh, the show All Rise for uh, New York Film Academy, actually. Mm -hmm. And... Um, that was a lot of fun. That was kind of like, you know, you know, getting back into uh, writing and stuff. And I haven't written an article in years. The last time that I wrote an article was probably like 10 years ago um, for like, you know, I don't even remember. But there was a kind of like small, small, like video game site that I was trying to like help start up and and write reviews, video game reviews and stuff. Um, but, uh, mm -hmm. but yeah, this was this was a ton of fun. And you know, getting something actually published out there and stuff was, was a lot of fun. And I got another piece also that's going to be published soon. And I'm trying to do some jujitsu article writing as well for uh, some other jujitsu news sources. So I'm trying to get my, trying to get myself more involved with creative as well as public writing, like not just writing, mm -hmm. you know, as a hobby, um, but, you know, moving towards th that as a maybe career development, you never know. So. as a hobby and a service well maybe, maybe right. you could help me because i had uh i don't know why it reminded me i had what i thought would be an awesome idea for a few star wars movies no, no <laughs> hear me out here okay. uh i wanted to have a star wars plot that took place in the past in the distant past and the future this came to me in a dream okay like partially okay. most of it and like the the it, i thought it was pretty interesting because in the dream i had this idea that the rule of two for the sith Mm -hmm. was actually a fail safe like the first sith i know that this is established in canon but i thought it would be cool if we decided that the first sith was actually a gray jedi who was kind of a, a mole who created the rule of two to weaken the sith okay and this is like in this this is like old republic times this is like establishing like the old republic the jedi the sith this is when they're all first being established sort of right and then the story the story kind of continues on into the into the future or the present where the sith discover that it's a ruse and then mm -hmm. they actually start to build sith armies 
instead of saying like, oh, there's a rule of two. Like that was just something that was told to us that would give us some sort of weird ultimate power. Mm. But the reality is that numbers still are power and not just that's power. Like, that's um, like Jedi espionage. Yeah, but like the cool the cool part of the dream was I ha- I had the coolest lightsaber fight ever in my dream. These dudes these dudes were fighting down a collapsing mountain, these two Jedi. Like, but it wasn't like a mountain with like a slope. It was a mountain that it was like I guess it's called a butte. Like it goes straight the frick the frick up and they're fighting they're lightsaber fighting like down the collapsing mountain. And that's all I have of this. So you can help I don't me know. develop that to the story. That's interesting. <laughs> that's I don't know how I, I... Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, go on, go on. Yeah, no, yeah. that that just that that imagery just kind of I don't know if you guys remember this. Um remember mm-hmm. the uh the the scene in G.I. Joe where Snake Eyes is is fighting all the, the ninjas yeah. down that cliff. Yeah, yeah, I always think that in yeah. the Shinobi, the Shinobi video like game, that. where you're like fighting, you're climbing I mean, rocks yeah, yeah. and fighting up the waterfall. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know that's funny. Um, I, I, you know, I can't think of like what I could contribute to that storyline, but it does kind of inspire quickly inspire just you know the imagery of of a specific storyline mm-hmm. that I think would have ultimately kind of made even you know the whole Palpatine storyline better. Like, what if Palpatine was actually the very first Sith? all along and the rule of two ah. was to protect to protect himself His power. right, Ooh, so, right? because the very the very first sith that we know of was not the first sith he is palpatine's puppet you know so this way palpatine is always never is never in danger and you know he doesn't care if that other sith he dies and stuff like that and you know so it just keeps true. going generation generation after generation he's true where, like, like it's immortal sith, like he really is the Sith, basically. Right, because yeah, because he yeah, he's he's creating these puppets for which he can take over their bodies and transfer his uh soul and stuff like oh, that. Or he harnesses their or, power each time, basically. That's how right. he gets stronger and stronger. Right. Um, stuff, like you know, little things like this, you know, all for the ultimate goal of of taking over the entire empire, where at the end it ended up destroying him because he truly believed that he is the Sith, that this whole uh rule of two is it was a ruse that he came out uh, came up with just for this final oh, moment. I like it. Star Wars fan never, fiction all around, bro. Ooh, maybe yeah, we should do an episode one day where we come up with like cool Star Wars fan fiction stories <laughs> off the top of our heads just for the hell of it. Yeah, I'd, <laughs> Sorry, I'd, I'd be into it. Were you saying something, Walt? No, I was just saying Wolfie never misses a chance to to dig at the rise of Skywalker. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. It's just that, like, it, like I, I I feel like I can write it better, and that's it. And like, this is oh, another listen, perfect we, example. I just I think that I come up with a better. Yeah, well, that's I a think that way I can come up with a better, better reason to bring back Palpatine in the movie. Absolutely, way better. Right. that's a million times better. And it's a and very I just came small up with change in a moment. Too. Yeah, that's a very small yeah. change, which is awesome. You know what I mean? Like that's what those are sometimes the best ideas, like simple changes. Right. So, like if you're gonna make him, yeah. if you're gonna make him the, if you're gonna make him the big bad, why don't you make him the ultimate evil of the entire Star Wars universe? Don't right. bring him back and say that like, oh well, you know, he survived that. He didn't just survive that. He's been surviving the entire war between the Sith and the Jedi from day one. Like thousands of years. Exactly. Like that's, that's pretty. Yeah. Like that's a dangerous dude right there. Like you don't want to mess with that guy. And that 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 shows you how he can get the power to like force lightning an entire freaking fleet out of nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. I exactly. would like that idea more. So anyway, that's what I've been geeking out over, <laughs> and uh, yeah, you know, that's awesome much. and that's super interesting and definitely sparked a cool a few cooler ideas. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. So like, I'll, I have a couple of, uh, a couple of geek outs. I'll start with something that I, a show that I just started on Hulu. Um, my girlfriend asked, actually suggested it. Um, and it's actually really funny and really interesting. It's this show called the great on Hulu. And it's basically, it's basically like a comedic fictional account of Catherine, the greats rise to power in Russia. Okay, and it's it's like I said, it's comedic. Okay, Nicholas Holt plays like like Peter of Russia, who in in this story and in history was um, the czar or the emperor of Russia at the time. Yeah, I, I know that's, that show. You know that show? Have you seen or have you watched it or have you I, seen like kind of the ads for it? I've seen the ads for it, and it's, it looks super interesting. It's really funny. It's really, really funny. Like I was going into it, you know, like this might be interesting, you know, like with an open mind, but it's funnier than I even expected. It's very funny. Like it's, and it's, and it's 
it's intriguing and well acted and well written and it's it's compelling at times um and very interesting it's it's kind of like it's not it's not to this extent like with the violence and the craziness but it's almost like a comedic game of thrones um so it's it's very funny and very interesting okay um so i've enjoyed it a lot so far we've only seen two episodes um, and let me, you know what, let me, let me shout out the actors and actresses here. Uh, like I said, Nicholas Holt plays Peter. He's a more well-established actress, I guess, for the geekdom out there. The guy who played Beast in X-Men First Class and all of those recent films. He was in Mad Max Fury Road. He's in a lot of, uh, he's in a lot of geekdom fare. But let me, let me just pull out the cast here real quick because I definitely want to give him a shout out for their great performances. The lead actress is fantastic. She's funny. She's really, really interesting. Um, it's actually Elle Fanning, who I guess that's, is that, is she related to Dakota Fanning? I, I knew, yeah. I know she's an actress, yeah. but I haven't yeah. really seen her or anything. I think they're sisters. Okay. I would imagine, but she has like an English accent in this, which is weird because they're all supposed to be Russian. So it's kind of like Chernobyl where everybody has an English accent for some reason. Yeah. Um, but like, so Elle Fanning plays Catherine the Great and she's fantastic. Nicholas Holt is Peter the third of Russia. And he's, he's a, a massive jerk and it's played for great comedic effect, like throughout a lot of the episodes and a lot of the series. Um, but he, it's Nicholas Holt. So like, you know, he plays it in a way where he's a huge jerk. He's like a despot, but like, he's, he's like sympathetically funny in a way. And then mm-hmm. you have uh, Phoebe Fox is in it. Charity Wakefield, Adam Godley, Lewis Hines, Sasha Dewan. These are some of the principal actors in this. They play a few different roles in the in um, the court or in the 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 advisors, Peter's advisors, and some of the servants and and all of that. Um, but it's a really it's a really really funny, a really really cool show so far. We've only seen two episodes. It's on Hulu. It's called The Great. And I would if you know if you're a fan of like kind of witty, dry. Um, comedy if you like something uh, that's like a kind of a period piece or a historical type of drama comedy uh i think this is something that you would definitely really like so uh walt since you've seen some ads for it you know there's nothing but time right now you should definitely check it out with the kids if you if if you want um the other thing that i've been bigly bigly very bigly geeking out about over the last couple of weeks um is something that I mentioned a few weeks ago when I had just started watching this show. Um, it's uh, I had just started watching the first couple of episodes. It's Money Heist on Netflix. Oh, I thought you were going um, in a different direction there. Yeah, no, no. no. Um, I mean, I've been watching a, a lot of t- uh, Yu Yu Hakusho anime and like catching up on a lot of anime besides. Um, so that's kind of what I'm watching it like in other directions, but, okay. but we're talking about you money heist here. What's up? Go you ahead. Scared, Go ahead. You scared me with the, the bigly comment. That's why. So I thought you no, were no, going no, to... Yeah, no, nothing, nothing related to, um, president business or tangerine Palpatine. Nothing yes, related please. to either of those things. Um, no money heist. So money heist is awesome. Uh, if, if you haven't seen it, you need to see it. If you, if you're cool with watching a show, with subtitles you need to watch it with in the original spanish with subtitles i, I want to mention that first dub? off yeah they, they there is a dub, dub. when you no, when you no, hit no. play on netflix it starts with the dub the dub is terrible <laughs> as in my opinion most dubs are the dub is terrible the voice actors in the dub are terrible they don't sound like they're in the environment so they don't sound engineer it very well i hate the but dub. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> our, our anime, our anime audience knows exactly that 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 whole point because dub versus sub has always been a conversation there. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Usually, everybody says go sub, right? Sub. I agree. I agree. Pretty much. I, I like to watch almost any anime in in uh, the original Japanese first. And I think it's a little easier than anime. I think it's better to do it with anime because obviously it's a little more natural with animation than it is with live action. So yep. with live action, it gets so weird. It gets janky. It's, it gets disjointed. And maybe it's just a personal thing with me, but I do not like. Like, whenever I watch a foreign film, I always watch it with subtitles, even if I don't understand the language. And I speak Spanish, so Money Heist I can understand for the most mm-hmm. part. Um, but so Money Heist, watch it in Spanish. 
the actors in Spanish are freaking brilliant. The Spanish actors on this show, like I, I have legitimately decided that after I'm done with Money Heist, not only are we going to watch because like, well, me and my girlfriend are also into the show. Like I said, she got us into the great. I think I suggested Money Heist. You know, we have so much time that we're trying to get through a couple of different shows that have been popular recently. So, um, so Money Heist. Like I said, you watch it in the Spanish and I'm legitimately, we're going to watch the documentary. There's a documentary on Netflix, which is really interesting to me because it's Netflix basically congratulating him, themselves on, on how awesome they were to find this show in Spain oh and then buy it and then make it into this show that's really popular. It's like, it's, it net, it's Netflix. Bump. Yeah, it's like they're congratulating themselves on yeah. like, on this show. But I love well, the listen, cast so much. It wouldn't be the I'm first interested. time. I'm sorry. It wouldn't be. Not at all. Yeah. Because they've they've done that with other series where they've they've kind of languished in obscurity, and just because it goes to Netflix, all of a sudden it becomes like the greatest thing of all time, you know? Yeah, yeah. Or other shows going elsewhere, like Amazon Prime getting The Expanse, which is one of my favorite shows. Obviously, they market it a lot more. They have like a lot more YouTube videos and interviews and documentaries that I eat up as a result of them yeah. moving it from sci-fi or Siffy uh, to Amazon Prime. But so so I'm intrigued, and I'm definitely going to watch the documentary about to find out more about how it, it, it went from being a failed show in Spain, which I do know a little bit about what happened. So very briefly, one of the principal actresses uh, spoke out about a, about supporting a controversial group in Spain that some people mm. consider a freedom, like freedom fighters. Some people consider them terrorists. Mm. Uh, so that actually got the show canceled in Spain after two seasons. Really? But, which is interesting because they kind of wrap things up after two seasons. And it was, it, it seems like a mini series, but I'll, I'll get to that without spoiling it. But so then Netflix, you know, saw this really, really popular show. They decided to buy it. They decided to pay for the production of season three and season four, which shows because season one and season two, you know, it's a, it's still a very well produced, it's a slick show. It's well, well acted, well directed, good cinematography. But you can see, you know how it is with shows when they get that Netflix bump or that Amazon Pope bump and that budget just skyrockets. Yeah. Um, so in season three and season four, like everything's filmed on location. So it's, I was actually going to ask you how many seasons. seasons there were. There's four seasons oh. and we're already on season four. What I, what nice. I think I mentioned it like three weeks ago. <laughs> yeah. And, and I think know, when, you, when you mentioned it, it was trending number one on Netflix, wasn't it? Yeah, I think that's that's why I decided to watch it because it was trending number one on Netflix, and a lot of my Facebook friends were like that that I consider true cinephiles uh, were mentioning how cool it was, um, including a friend of mine who has his own um, Instagram page. Uh, his name is uh, Wild About Films on Instagram, and he had oh, a pretty okay. pretty good review about it. So. Um, I looked at Wild About Films on Insta and a couple of other friends of mine that I trust their taste. And I was like, you know what? I want to check this, this show out. Um, so I've been talking all about the background. And I'll tell you a little bit about the show very quickly. Like I said, I don't want to spoil it. But um, first of all, the show was actually called La Casa de Papel, which in Spanish means the house of paper. But they changed that for, for reasons of it being confused with house of cards. Um, mm -hmm. And if you watch the show, the intro still says La Casa de Papel. Um, but it's basically what the show's American title implies. It's a, it's a heist. These, this group of robbers who have uh, their nicknames are all different cities around the world. So you have Tokyo, you have Berlin, you have Nairobi, Denver, Moscow, Helsinki, Oslo. Um, and they hatch this plan along with this guy named who calls himself the professor. <laughs> He's like the... He's the, the mastermind of this plan, as his name implies. They hatch a plan to, to break into the Royal Mint of Spain and rob it, basically. So it's like, it's, I don't know, it's really, really, really an interesting show because it, it can remind you and be derivative of a couple of good American shows and movies. Like one that comes to mind easily is something like Ocean's Eleven, you know, those heist movies. Mm -hmm. But... Like I said, the acting is on a really, really high level. <clears throat> and the plotting, like the way that they have the kind of give and take between the robbers and the police and whoever else it is that's trying to prevent them from pulling off their heist is, is really, really, really well written, really well plotted. Um, the plot holes are minimal for how complicated this plan is and how complicated the response gets 
with the police or whoever else. Uh, I think it's a really, really well written show. Um, and my personal favorite, uh, there is an actor who, uh, his name is Pedro Alonso, Pedro Alonso. He plays Berlin and he's one of the robbers. And like, I really need to see more from this guy. Cause he's got this, you know how much I love. I've said it a million times. I'm still trying to get you guys to see, you guys know how much I love breaking bad. Um, but I guess a decent analog is so breaking bad. You have, um, the villain is Giancarlo Esposito for a couple of seasons or Gus Fring as his name is on the show. You've seen how awesome Giancarlo Esposito can be as a villain, not just in the Mandalorian, but I'm sure in other things, this guy, this guy kind of gives you that like calm, cool, collected, but like twisted vibe. And like the actor pulls it off so well. Um, then you have the guy who plays Denver. He's kind of like a Spanish James Franco, but he's like a really good actor. Um, there's another actress who plays Nairobi, who is, um, another one of the characters, obviously in the heist. And she's a great actress. She has some great storylines and just like, you know, all the different characters that they pull together and all the different storylines that they juggle, all the great monologue, really well-staged action scenes. Um, and, and just like the, the, the thing that the show does really well is, Something that you're going to get in a show like this, I feel like almost automatically is you're going to have a lot of standoffs. You're going to have people pointing guns at each other or like making threats or like saying like, we're going to have to do this or we have to do this or we're done or the police are going to catch us. Or if we don't do this, like these people are going to get away, whatever. It can turn cliche after a while in something mm. that's not well written. And in this show, yeah. like even though I chuckle and there's some there's some parts of the show that are absolutely balls out absurd. But it's it's still really good. Like like it never completely crosses the line over into campiness. It still grounds itself in this really really greatly, like like I said, produced, written, and acted show. So yeah, like I don't want to get into spoilers. So if I keep going, I will. So I'm just gonna leave it at that. Money Heist okay. is awesome on Netflix. There's four seasons on there. Uh, you should definitely check out Money Heist if you like really well acted slick thrillers um, well, I, get, I get the sense that we're going to see these actors um you know shortly especially since they're getting that netflix bump you know, yeah they'll probably be in netflix productions good. you know because netflix is doing a lot of foreign productions in recent years as well so you never know they might they might jump into the the more mainstream stuff you know what i'm saying yeah yeah well it doesn't seem like many of them speak english but who the heck knows and who cares? We'll see. They'll find a way to, to squeeze them into some good art. And I think that would be a great yeah. idea because they're, like I said, there's some fabulous actors in this and some of them are not really that good at all. In fact, like the main character, Tokyo is actually really not that intriguing to me, but the rest of the characters just pull it together so well, you know, the hostages, okay. everyone that's, that's involved, the hostages, the police, the criminals themselves. It's just, it's a great, it's a great show and it's easy to binge and watch it in the original Spanish with the subtitles or you're, you're doing an injustice to yourself into the show. <laughs> All cool. right. All right. So, um, so let's, let's jump next. into, yeah, AJ, jump into your geek outs, please. Mm -hmm. Senor. All right. Well, I've been doing a couple of things actually, but I'll go for the things I've been mostly focusing on. Mm -hmm. One of which has been reading, uh, kind of came out of nowhere, but I just, I've had this lying around for a little bit, and I just figured, mm -hmm. you know what, maybe I can get some inspiration for my own writing, or something along those lines. Mm -hmm. So I decided to finally undergo the journey through Inferno. Mm -hmm. That would be Alighieri's work. Oh, indeed. That is some deep, deep stuff. Yeah, well, I read. I, I read. Uh, Walt gave me a copy of that when I was a young, when I was younger, when I was like 14, 15 years old, and I read that. Yeah, and so I, I haven't gotten very far. I only finished the first canto, and you know, mm -hmm. pretty good so far. Um, I did not know that yeah. he was. Oh no! Wait. No, you know what? Never mind. Why anyway, don't you, why don't you give an overview for the people who don't know what that is? Just a quick synopsis of the book. 
Okay. So, and I actually didn't know this, but so the whole thing is called the Divine Comedy. Yes. What I didn't know was that it's composed of three parts. I always thought they were all one in the same book, but they're mm-hmm. actually three parts. The first one is Inferno. The second one is Purgatorio. And the third one is Paradiso. Mm-hmm. And it's basically a... a dis- what it... <laughs> Inferno deals with taking Sorry. a journey to hell. And basically looking at all the various nine circles, each level basically embodying the sin and why mm-hmm. those people are there. The second book, which I haven't read but probably intend on reading soon enough, is Purgatorio, which is kind of like the middle way. Like, mm. you were good, but you weren't bad. So you're just kind of in this waiting like at least that's what I believe purgatory is, because that's yeah. what it's about. Yeah. And then Paradiso. You're reviewing your file in purgatory, basically. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. And then Paradiso is obviously heaven. So, mm-hmm. but I'm looking at the Inferno right now, and yeah, it's gonna be pretty cool. The I other thing that. that I've been doing, I know this one's gonna laugh at me, but. This is one you've been recommending me for a while, and I, I don't know. I just, I guess, decided to pick it up. Is it yours? Ours? No, it's mine. Which one is it? You, like I said, you're gonna laugh at me. Oh, Oh boy. I don't know, but for some reason, I just, I picked up Teen Wolf. I thought you were talking about. It's a good show, though. Oh, Teen Wolf on MTV. Yeah, that is an awesome show. I've been watching it on Prime. Yeah, yeah. I, I actually saw I think the first two or three seasons and then I kinda I kinda just fell off. But those first two or three seasons were actually pretty good. Yeah. How far have you gotten? I'm still in season one. I just uh, spoiler warning, even though there shouldn't be a spoiler warning, but I'm just gonna be nice and say spoiler warning. Mm-hmm. I'm up to the part where his girlfriend finds out that he's a werewolf because they were by the school buses. And, you know, the two trucks went, and they just went, mm-hmm. and then he jumped on top of it, and he obviously looked like a wolf, and it was like, oh, my God. <laughs> and look, this one's already cringing. <laughs> Actually, it, you it should. It says you, it in the name, teen. Come on, bro. Yeah, well, that's that's a. It's um, a actually an older show okay, okay, okay. like uh, no no it, it was it was based off of, it's like an adaptation of the michael j michael j fox yeah michael um, j fox movie mm-hmm. yeah that was back in the 80s right yes mm-hmm. so it was a show not, i mean a movie not a show. it was a movie yeah. first yeah oh, okay. the movie back in the days first in 1985 uh the original film came out there you go um with michael j fox mm-hmm. much yeah. different show but uh by the way because yeah, I heard if I remember it was a correctly, more it's serious, more dark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Teen Wolf is more like a comedy, right? It's like didn't they do that? Yeah, it's definitely a comedy. Isn't that the kind of like oh, I haven't seen oh. it, but I heard they did that with Sabrina, the teenage witch, as well, right? I think the new show's a little more yeah, little less the chilling weird. adventures. Yes. Mm-hmm. If, yeah. It's, mm-hmm. if it has, if it's okay, answers to prove that it is cringeworthy. Okay, mm-hmm. not cringeworthy. It is. Well, for okay. you, it is. Question number one. <laughs> Is it like the originals? Um, Is it like the originals? That's a that's a show on CW that Andre was really geeking out before it finished, right? Yeah. Yeah. Now it's legacies. Oh, okay. Um, I mean, there are elements that are reminiscent. Okay. Um, it's like Vampire Diaries. I mean, the whole teen drama thing. I guess you can say, yeah. There's your answer. <laughs> it's yeah. not as CW as you would think, though. It's it, really not. But it's teen drama. And it's got Superman. <laughs> CW Superman is on there. Mm-hmm. Tyler Hoken, I think is his name. Point so, made. Hoken or Hoekland or whatever. Yeah, Hoekland, yeah. Something I, like that. I, I, I expected Corn on the cob, bro. I, this, I, I expected this reaction. Eli, it's well, look, Eli, when when you when you get to your geek out, you can tell us how cool that is or corny. Well, perhaps. actually, I do have some revelatory news, and this is for later. 
We uh-huh. finally found a show that he does not think is corny. Is corny. What's yes. that? I can't wait to we're, talk we're, about We're going to get into that. That is going to be that shared geek out. Um, well, I mean, it's kind but of... But we'll get, we'll get into that later. Yeah. The All last right. thing, and E wanted to do this jointly with me. Yeah. We got shares all over the place. Yeah. Dragon Ball Legends just had its second, second anniversary. anniversary. Oh, boy. And All right. Vegito, Trunks. Ah, you, you're, you're completely botching it. You're not even listening. <laughs> you have to listen See, to Transformation. This oh, yeah. is the point of the show where they, they go kind of bonkers because we are talking about Dragon Ball Legends. You do not understand the level of conversations that happen at the dinner table when these two get together and start talking about Dragon Ball Legends. But I digress. Continue, guys. I heard them before. If you've heard oh, us before, you, you know how they go. <laughs> Yeah, yeah right. exactly. So, people, just a, a PSA: strap your your belt buckles on, because here we go. So, name the first one. I know which one you're going to say already. It's Fusamasu, my boy. Oh, okay. I was actually going to go for the headliner, SSB or Super Saiyan Blue Vegito. Future Trunks. I don't think anybody uh, cares about these you, last. You, next you two. still. You didn't say it right I, I still. Got future trunks. Future trunks rage. No. Like yes. The thank ones you. After this. The ones after this. Oh, okay. Super Saiyan trunks rage. Yes. Yeah, that's that's. That's my strongest character on the in the game okay. right now. Bear yeah, with. Really good. Bear with me right now. This is gonna sound a little clunky, but this is actually how you're supposed to say it. Super full power, Saiyan for Goku. Yeah, I don't think anybody cares about this one. Actually, no, like the one after Super Saiyan Four, Omega Shenron. Nobody cares about him. He's actual garbage. They hyped him up. They hyped him up so much. Guess what he is? He's a glass cannon, as Andre. That's says because it. you didn't get him to fourteen stars. I have Bro. my sources that say when you get him to fourteen stars, Bro. he can be a game changer. Hold up! Hold up! Hold up! <laughs> Sources it shouldn't say. be based off of how many stars he is. Of course, no, it wait, does. If, if stars we, changes the no, names no. of the game, the name of the game. No, no, no. Here if we go. If Zamasu can take out Omega Shenron with just a couple mm. of hits at two stars, mm. while Omega Shenron is also on two stars, that proves it all. He's garbage. Omega Shenron. You're sucks. not even giving it the benefit of full of having the full potential. You're really not. How, how can you make an informed decision on, oh, it's just two stars, two star fight? Have you, okay. Have you ever checked out <laughs> Limit Status, Omega Shenron? Tell me how much damage he does. Limit Status, what? That's, that's you yeah. can check out his you ability. You can check how, how he is when he's full powered. Okay, but that's nothing compared to actually using it in battle. You know battle. how much damage he does? Go, go ahead, go ahead. 300. <laughs> Thousand. I, I don't know what that means at all. <laughs> I think he's talking about the base. Okay, you know what? Stat. Fine, you I don't know. I know. Just so everybody knows know what he's talking about. Unsubstantiated. Bad. Yeah, just so everybody knows, the thing that they're talking about is called Dragon Ball Legends. It's a mobile game that you can download for free on iOS or Android. Get it. Mm-hmm. So it, it's different from um, Dragon Ball Dokkan because Dragon Ball Dokkan is mostly a card game, right? Well, this is a card game too, but you actually get to yeah. There's more. There's like, more interactive when you're fighting and stuff. So you actually see the animations and you're actually directing the characters to, um, you know, fight and cards come up as uh, ability cards, right? Well, it's more so you have strike arts, uh, blast arts, uh, skill. special move, special and skill? Skills. special skill. Yeah. And ultimate. Ultimate card. Well, not all of them ultimate have that, card. but... Yeah. But in other words, he's absolutely... Okay, garbage. the point Walt was trying to make earlier, though, basically, Happy if you have... Happy birthday, anything, Dragon Ball oh. Legends! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> If you have MKX Mobile, it's yeah. like that, but for Dragon Ball. Yes, it's very similar. <laughs> there are other... Um, just like Injustice also, right? Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. But there are other lesser units that came out, but they also have their merits. I'll just put that out there. Okay. 
and my last evidence to prove, he, prove he's garbage. Oh, uh, you didn't really state any viable evidence okay. so far, but <laughs> go this, on. Go this on. This is very viable. The Z list, the tier Z list. Okay, fine. So I'm going to rank you um, the people from top to bottom who's best to last on the anniversary summon based off the tier Z list. And guess who comes last? Okay. Um, so you're going to go last to first? Best to last. Best. Okay, best to last. Okay. Vegito. So, number one. Fusamasu, my boy, of course. Number two. Future Trunks. Number three. Super Saiyan 4, full uh, power. Four. Super full power Saiyan 4. I know it's weird, but that's what it's Drum called. Drum roll, please. Drum roll, please. That's the dude from uh, GT, right? Yeah. Drum roll. Omega Shenron. I'm pretty sure everybody expected that, right? Again, you... you I'm not, not sure what you're talking about, so I know. Is Omega Shenron a, a character that's kind of popular in Dragon Ball, or is it one of these things where it's like... Yeah, there was a Shenron arc, and it's like, eh, whatever. Oh, he's no, pretty. He's popular. popular. He's definitely yeah, popular. Some people, the, some people obviously feel that way, and then there are people like me who actually appreciate the GT saga. I mean, GT for me is half and half. You have you have some sagas that are awesome, like the Baby Saga and the Omega Shenron saga, and then you have some sagas that suck, like the Lord the Lud star. saga. And yeah. the uh, yes, and uh, and the Black Star, Dragon Ball, and um, Super Android Seventeen is 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 super dumb. <laughs> so, yeah, GT GT is kind of like the uh, it's hit or miss. It's very hit yeah. or miss. Sure. Yeah. Side of Dragon Ball. So, whatever. If you're really gonna go there, think about this. Super mm -hmm. Saiyan couldn't lay a hand on Beerus. You know who else couldn't lay a hand? Who? Do you know who else didn't get phased by Super Saiyan 3? You, you, you want to tell me who that is? No, you do. Because you know the answer to this. It's just it as well as I do. It was a little bit of a fair fight. Fair fight. No, it wasn't. And that way you remind you, he was just a kid then. No, uh, he's he still Super kid. Saiyan 3. He was and you're the one who's always saying kids are powerful. Well, he... Well, uh, hmm... But, I'm not gonna say it. Right. I'm not gonna say <laughs> Yeah, because he's too prideful. Let's, That's my boy, baby. Baby I'm sucks. About. He's garbage. He's such a crybaby. Point Let's of the matter. Dragon is. Ball to another conversation. Um, unless somebody else is gonna geek out about something Dragon Ball related. Oh, <laughs> Point yeah. of the matter is yes. Happy anniversary, Dragon Ball Legends. Woo! Super Saiyan God Shallot, please come out already. Happy birthday, Dragon Ball Legends. Woo! Yeah. All right. It's me. Yep, yep. It's, you. it's you. It's you. Okay, I'm, uh, I did three things, even though I haven't had much time. Uh, uh -huh. First thing, uh, I've been watching One Piece. Nice. Cool. All right. I, you just I, you just I, started I, it, right? Yeah. How many yeah. episodes are you in? One and a half. One and a half. Okay. That's why I really can't say anything really, about it. That's really, really. Well, how was the first episode? Was it interesting? <laughs> did you like it? it, it it was interesting, but now looking back on it, I feel like it was corny. <laughs> I think I think it was I think it was corny. But <laughs> there it is. <laughs> but, there it is. But but okay. Corny in a good way. Okay, that's good. It's one of the few episode few shows that I consider. <laughs> it's good that it's corny. It's it's, it's, well, really, it's it's a rubber he's I, a rubber pirate for God's sake. You know I, I haven't really established what the difference between good corny and bad corny is yet. So maybe we need to have a conversation about that. Yeah, we need to have but, a corny yeah. rating, you know. Yeah. Like what does corny mean? What what is the corny context? Is it like popcorn corny and then like uh niblets corny as as the bad corny? Which which corn where does it fall on the corn rating? Popcorn more, corny. More, popcorn more, corny. Impo more importantly, like, how how are you going to get through it if it's corny when there's, Lord, how many episodes of One Piece are there? It's like one of the longest running anime. It's, I know it's one of the longest running manga. It's one of the longest running anime of all freaking time, isn't it? It's like yeah. dozens of seasons. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think it's like thousands. It's, it's 20 seasons so far. 
gosh. Seriously? 20 seasons. Yeah. I did not even realize that. Yeah, One Piece has been on forever, dude. And I haven't seen it either, full disclosure. But I do know that One Piece, there's to give you an idea. Season one is 61 episodes, and there's 20 seasons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm telling that's you. That's right. like over a. Th- that's ridiculous. Yeah, that's I three thought three seasons of Supernatural. Bro. I thought Naruto yeah. and Baruto were bad. Oh, no. <laughs> One Piece is One Piece is insane. That's twelve. That's about twelve hundred episodes. If you're talking sixty episodes a season, Jesus Christ. <laughs> so that's, that's six hundred. That's like almost six hundred hours of television. If they're like, or a little bit less, right? Like four hundred hours of television. If they're about twenty minutes. You know, I, I was I was interested in watching it, but now that you say there's like sixty episodes in that first season, I'm gonna live vicariously through Eli. Dude, I'm I'm fin- I'm just finishing up Yu Yu Hakusho. The entire series is like 120 episodes. Yeah, <laughs> like Dragon true. Dragon Ball Super was 131. That's two yeah. seasons of, of of One Piece. Hey man, <laughs> if I did Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball GT, and Dragon Ball Super, it come close, I yeah. Yeah, you're. It's coming. You it's getting there because you have three, almost three hundred episodes of Dragon Ball and of Dragon Ball Z. GT was about one hundred and twenty something, and and uh, Super was one hundred and thirty one. So that's like almost nine hundred right there. Wow. Yeah, there's a lot of Dragon Ball too. Yeah, Manga runs for a while. But anyway, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Eli. We just hijacked right. it. Like One Piece. We were talking about One Piece and your geek outs. So yeah, um, one and a half episodes, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're so only I really like o- um, only eleven hundred to go. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to. You can do it. <laughs> if I did it, you can too. Okay. <laughs> Commitment. I'll go for try. it. Try that, anyway. and you also have to out. Listen, you're you're about to finish school in like the next week or so. So you're gonna have time this 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 time. You know? to Eli's gonna have like three kids by the time he's done with One Piece. Like <laughs> he'll be he'll be entering the nursing home and he'll be like, "Yes, I finally finished it." He'll still be making episodes. Then they'll be on season seventy. Oh god! <laughs> All right. Anyways, I'm anyway, sorry. It's yeah. just too it's too ripe. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> you can do it. You can do it. Okay. Okay. I will support you in this. Okay. And you're on One Piece watching. I want to watch it too, honestly. I, I think that um, given the fact that I don't know much about this, I haven't mm-hmm. watched like literally much. Yeah. And there, mind you, there are no subtitles. I, I don't think so. I tried using subtitles. So That's, that, anything, that's not possible. <laughs> yeah. Where are you watching it? Funimation on my phone. Funimation, there's subtitles. Double double check again, because yeah, I, I watch. Fun, I have Funimation now also, so I watch. I watch everything with mostly everything with subtitles. The only thing recently that I haven't watched with subtitles was uh, Yu Yu Hakusho because uh, Chris Sabat does does a voice on it, and you know I love Vegeta, mm-hmm. so that's the only reason I didn't do that. But yeah, you you can if you need help, let me know. Go ahead. Go yeah, ahead, probably a setting on the phone. Yeah, it's so. definitely like a setting somewhere. Mm-hmm. I might need to do that. But anyway, um, uh, there's this one character. I I don't even remember his name, but I think it was like Zoro. But I he really reminds me of Guts in like in in a way. Like he's Guts from Berserk. Berserk. Yeah, it's Zoro. Like, it is Zoro. Mm-hmm. He, he at at first, since I only watched what half of a second ep- episode, he seemed he doesn't seem like a bad guy. But at the same time, he has that mentality where he's like, he doesn't trust anybody. And that's why he really reminds me of Guts, since they're basically a little bit the same. Guts was kind of violent. Is he kind of violent or like, is he just a little less? Is it more about the trust than than any type of like style of justice or whatever? Oh, (laughs) go ahead. The only Mm -hmm. thing I've seen from him was the fact that um, he was tied to like. I don't know, like some sort of cross, and he just ate a rice ball from the dirt. <laughs> oh, alrighty then. <laughs> how it was do you, weird. Oh, oh, hold on, unless you're talking that, about man. a reverse crucifix, how on earth do you do that? Hmm? What? He, he was tied to a cross and it was standing up. No, no, he oh, was no. walking with it, right? No, he was just he was just there. 
um, Luffy came along and handed him a, him a, a right. No, there was this girl who handed him. him a, spoiler alert. There was this girl who handed him a rice ball. I don't think that qualified. Okay. Okay. Spoiler. Yeah, that's yeah. not. That's probably dude, not a huge spoiler. <laughs> he he took the rice ball and he ate it and he thought it was garbage, so he just put it on the ground. And they threw the girl outside of the walls of the military base. Um, mm. And the dude just, Zoro just literally asked if he could eat it from the floor. And Luffy gave it to him. Okay. Yeah, it, it's weird. You have to watch it to, like, really understand character, what's going on. Ca- character cool. development, bro. It's character I'm, development right there. I'm interpreting this correctly. She gave him the rice ball. He spit it out. No, it was then another she- dude. Sorry. It was another dude. So the other dude spit it out. Oh. She gave it to another dude. The other dude spit it out. Zoro saw it. Luffy came. He said, dude, can I have the rice ball? And Luffy fed it to Zoro. Yeah. And the girl got thrown out. Yeah. Out of the base. <laughs> yeah. Got it. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's AJ, AJ's weird. trying to process this right now. You have to have. <laughs> the show's about a piece of rice. <laughs> one, one piece of rice ball. One piece. One piece. There you go. <laughs> One piece. Listen, the show can't be that bad because it's it's lasting like yeah forever. It's, so you know, it's it's yeah. one of the most popular anime ever. But like, just like you, Walt, I'm like I'm daunted by and like AJ, I'm daunted by the task of like. Actually, I looked just to be more clear. It looks like they're on episode like 930 or something like that. Oh, that's way too much. I, I so that's I barely have time to watch a regular TV show. I it, you know it's that's the that's the problem with these sometimes with the these animes and you don't watch it at the very beginning you wait and you wait and you wait and then all of a sudden a thousand episodes later you're like i can't invest that time yeah. to watch something like that you know it's like it one of my sense. close friends he doesn't understand dragon ball and i'm like you should watch it but then i'm also like do i want to make him watch like 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 600 episodes like yeah dragon ball is different the dragon ball is different but it's still daunting. It's like, holy crap. Like, you want me to get to know why this show is more than, like, dudes screaming and, like, attacking each other and Master Roshi having nosebleeds and, like, Listen, woman screaming at people? Like, I don't get it. I'm going to give you the template <laughs> for your friend. Let him watch Dragon Ball Broly. Well, he did. So he does appreciate it more. But watching the go. whole show is, a, is a, a bridge too far, maybe. All right. Well, yeah. listen. Do, we do, it, do it in, in slices. Watch the original Dragon Ball, and then go from there. You know, you know what I think is easier. If you really want to get somebody into Dragon Ball, honestly, you, you tell them to read the manga because the manga is easily more easily digestible than just continuously yeah. watching hundreds of hours of TV. If they like yeah, they, the manga, they'll like the show. Yeah, they skipped like um the less important scenes so that you just cut straight to the important parts. I think. It's yeah, the part part of that is the way that they produce anime. Because sometimes they use filler episodes in the anime that don't exist in the manga just to give the animators more time to, to finish episodes. It also helps um, that it takes them half an episode just to power up. Yes, that also is helpful as well. <laughs> but it's kind of, yeah, that's part of animation and anime as well. That's why the tendency also is the manga tries to get way ahead of the anime before they they create the anime which was a problem with super and why the animation was kind of cruddy early on mm-hmm. but uh, again i digress um one piece one is piece. freaking daunting yo <laughs> yeah i don't know if i'm gonna be able to get through that oh, but... you're trying you're one I and a half the geek out already <laughs> one and a half of one uh, yeah he's he's point anyway. zero what is point zero zero nine percent or is it point zero nine percent through the, the series we're almost there yeah something like that yeah but anyway um two other things that i want to point out real quick dokkan mm-hmm. anniversary is coming and i can't also there's also another summon event coming out for beerus and i'm really excited to see that if you if you if you don't know what's going on with dokkan check it out definitely uh anyway and oh two more the last one i'm gonna save once walt is done but anyway i've been working on a manga we got a lot Mm -hmm. of talented people on this podcast this one i'm really getting hyped about um well actually it's not just me it's me and aj i've seen some of the artwork the artwork is fire 
Mm-hmm. I gotta admit myself, bro. It's actually looking good, mm-hmm. yo. Anyway, I'm really committed to this. I'm not even joking. And I'm I'm gonna hopefully I'm gonna try and post. I will try and post. Just an image, just to just, get people excited about it. Yeah, sneak mm-hmm. peek. It might not even be finished. Yeah, make it a work in progress type yeah. of thing. But it'll it, it'll give you some context in and so what I'm doing with my um, with my manga. So do you have a, a working title for the manga yet? We're working on that. I think it's Enlightenment Alpha right now. Yeah, but I think mm-hmm. you said B. Yeah, that's I, a cool title. We need to change it. I know. Ladies and gentlemen, you're getting the inside workings of manga manga management. I thought that was a cool title, but that's just me. But, um, I don't want to say too much. No, I'm not so going to say don't. too much. I'm, I, we're, I'm just going to let Walt do his thing, and then we can get into the main geek out for me. Mm-hmm. Main geek out for me. All righty then. So, um, work has been kicking my butt for the last couple of weeks. Um, it's, it's made it pretty hard for me to kind of get into the flow of things um but lately things are kind of dying down you know um a lot of i i work for a hospital so you know we've been working a lot in terms of uh i work on the financial side of the hospital so you know we we've been working on doing you know hazard pay for our employees and things like that because you know they're they're working hard and you know they're they're really truly the heroes of this pandemic and stuff you know along with all the essential workers out there. So I, I'm just giving a shout out to everybody out there that, you know, have kept this country afloat. Um, but, you know, mm-hmm. I digress. So, you know, it, things have kind of been, you know, getting a little bit calmer, thankfully, in terms of pandemic stuff and things of that nature. So I'm, I'm having a little more time that, you know, working from home and things of that nature. Um So I got a little nostalgic. Um, One of the things that I wanted to revisit was something that was done a while ago. And Jose, you probably you you'll probably know what I'm talking about. So, Jose, I think your introduction to anime was really Dragon Ball, right? Mainly. I mean, there was definitely a lot of stuff that I had seen before in that, like um, Vampire Hunter D and yep. ninja scroll and akira so i had i had enjoyed anime but like yeah dragon ball would definitely be what made me love it for sure yeah and i think wolfie's wolfie's thing was more uh sailor moon that that piqued his attention mm-hmm. for me um the thing that really got me into anime was something that i used to wake up every morning and i, I think i've told this story a, you know a bit mm-hmm. regarding mm-hmm. that but I woke up in the morning because there was a show that I remember when I was going to school, I had to wake up and tape it on VHS. And it was kind of like a ritual every, every morning before I, you know, I went to school, put the videotape in, press play, start recording. Um, Mm -hmm. When the, uh, when the um, commercials came on, I would pause it so that it felt more like a movie and stuff. And that's going to be Robotech. Um, All right. Robotech was created by um, one of the producers over in Harmony Go. I think his name is Carl Masick. Mm-hmm. And what he did was he took three disparate but very similar style animes that were ongoing in Japan. Uh, one of them was Super Dimension Fortress Macross. The other one was Super Dimension Century Orgus. I'm sorry. No, I take that back. Um that was no, that's not the ones. It was Super Dimension Fortress Macross, Super Dimension Calvary Southern Cross, and Genesis, Genesis Climber Mospada. Mm-hmm. And what he did was he took these three different shows and blended it into one larger show. Uh, the show ran for 85 episodes, not as long as One Piece, but it was pretty, no. pretty decently long. Uh, and it became the Macross Saga, the Robotech Masters, and the New Generation. Um, I happen to be 
a big fan of the new generation. That was the one that I liked a lot more. But the Macross saga dealt with Rick Hunter, um, and there was a, an event that happened, ironically, 1999. Looking at it back, I, I saw the first couple of episodes, and it's funny how this was done in, like, the 80s, I think 85 also, and mm-hmm. 1999 for them was the near future. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, <laughs> Like so you had the, space you had the big event. Like, right. <laughs> yeah, it's it's weird, you know. Now we're looking at it, we're in 2020 and 1999. It's like, what? That's that was nothing, right? Yeah. So the big event in, in the Macross saga was that this big alien ship land crash lands on Macross Island. And within a 10 year span, um, this happens at a time when the Earth was involved in a global global conflict and stuff like that. And the mm-hmm. crash landing of the spaceship was actually a unifying event for humanity. So within the 10 year span that um, the Macro Saga then start, really truly starts at, they've kind of co-opted a lot of the technology that was on the ship. They rebuilt the ship to make it the Super def- the Defense Fortress 1, the SDF-1. And they used the technology which was called Robotech technology and created mechs out of this and other other various things and stuff like that. Um, the Macro Saga was the war between the humans and the Zentradi who came looking for that ship. Uh, eventually, they were the Macro Saga. Spoiler alert! But this is like a, almost a forty-year-old uh, anime. So, uh, if you don't know the the thing, shame on you. You should watch it. But they eventually win, and then the second piece is the Robotech Masters, where they come, uh, you know, the Zentradi are actually their, their force, and the Robotech Masters are the leaders, and then there's a war there, um, and eventually that they win that war just barely, but they're devastated, and that brings you into the new generation which is the Invid then invading the Earth and then humanity actually, for the most part, leaving the Earth and then trying to formulate plans to come back and try and retake their home planet. So in that vein, you know, I kind of got nostalgic for that. And I said, you know what, let me let me check out the old episodes. So I started the Macross saga, which is the one that I, aside from the new generation, that's the one that I remember the most. Um, So if you go on Prime Video, the entire saga is there. So you can watch it from the beginning to end. All the 85 episodes are there. I didn't know it was on Prime Video. That's pretty cool. I have Prime Video, so I might want to check that out. Yeah. It's it's an interesting thing because... Sorry about that. It's an interesting thing because, unfortunately... Oh, I thought I couldn't hear you there for a second. Yeah, yeah, I had, I had to, I had to move away from the mic for a quick second. Um, I loved Robotech as a kid. It's a little, uh, what's the word that I'm looking for? You know, when you go back and see something and it's not exactly as you remember it. Uh, it's dated. It yeah, it doesn't it's age well. Dated. Yeah, it's a little. You know, it, it's showing its age. You know, the uh, the way that they've um, and I guess this goes back to the whole sub versus dub type of thing. But Robotech was dubbed all the way. I don't think there is a, a version of it where it's the original Japanese voice and it's. I mean, I don't know the original shows, but they don't. But they're not. Yeah. Oh, the recent ones. No, you mean? Or? They're not. Yeah, they're not blended in with Robotech. He actually got those things and brought it to America by creating it. So you know, you'll have. If you watch the original shows, then you can see it in Jap- you can hear it in Japanese. Yeah. But there's no, it doesn't blend in as a as a as a a saga, right? Because they are three different shows, you know. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah that's, that I remember too, because you know I was into that as well. Although yeah. I didn't, I did, wasn't into it maybe as much because I was much younger when when you were consuming it. Um, and I got into it as I got older. I definitely love the toys. The toys were freaking awesome. Oh, those those <laughs> things. I I have my Alpha Fighters, my Beta Fighters. Um, I used to have the Cyclone Fighter, and these are all these are all um, models from the new generation version of Robotech. 
Yeah, um, man. Then there was that cyclone. time I was like, I was like eight, and I and I I tripped on coffee yogurt because I was excited to buy I that. that. Uh, the 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 motor the the oh, what was the name of the suit the mo- the motorcycle suit that that, that yeah, turned the, uh, into the armor the cyclone yeah the cyclone armor I was gonna get that and I was super well, we, trippy excited I was seeing things I did I did have that toy um, yeah. I had the original one from from way back when unfortunately the only thing that's left of that is Scott Bernard in the armor the just a regular riding armor suit. The cyclone armor part of it, the motorcycle is kind of in pieces because I, I we left it at mom's house and you know yeah. that's, it was just in storage, so it wasn't really taken care of well. You know, yeah, so, I get it. So, yeah, it's, it's a shame. We didn't know what we were what we were yeah, doing back exactly. then. And I, I I need to start looking for it again because again, that's one of my favorite pieces of mech, probably in all of anime. You know, yeah. that one vehicle that you know. Um, transforms into a battle suit onto the rider and stuff. So I got up to like four episodes of the Macross saga, and then you know I kind of not that it was it was so unwatchable because I still love the show, but you know I also was a collector of the comic books, and so I have a lot of the original ones that came out way back when. So. Um, and those are in, you know, plastic baggies with the, the cardboard back. So those are kind of like in storage. I don't even touch those anymore. So I figured, you know what? Let me get onto Comixology and see if I can find them there. And lo and behold, they are there in collected editions. But I didn't get that because I, as I was perusing their catalog, I see that there is a new updated adaptation of Robotech. And that caught my eye. Okay. So apparently in 2007, Titan Comics released uh, the Robotech Macross Saga series. Um, It's now available also in a collected edition and stuff. Um, And what they're doing is they're not... So the original comic books that I had, the ones from way back when, they were direct adaptations from the show. Uh, Literally, there, there are some panels in the comic book that are directly from the TV show. If you put them side by side, you can't tell the difference, right? The great thing is, is that what Titan Comics did is they took the basis of the story and they've adapted it for a little bit more modern times, right? So the the flow of the story is a little bit better. Now, um, the only thing I'm going to say is that if you're a purist you may not find this interesting. This may not capture your eye. Um, But if you're, you know, jumping into Robotech for the first time, this might, this might hit that spot where it's like, okay, I want to read this and it's a retelling. And it's, it's like I said, there are changes within the book itself. I see them and they're glaring, but it's not anything that takes away from the story. It actually, in my opinion, again, just my opinion, but I think it flows better the way the changes that they've made. Um, so the book is written by Brian Wood, and the artist that does the, you know, the the illustrations for the book. His name is Marco Tuni. Turin, Turini. I'm sorry, and. Like I said, the story is is well done, but a lot of the things that catches my eye when I, I'm reading a comic book, obviously, is the artwork. And I, and suffice it to say, I think the artwork really does, you know, it lends itself well to the story. It is not a clean type of artwork. Um, there's a lot of grittiness involved in it. There's a lot of deep shading that seems, it's almost like charcoal. Um, the lines are can be harsh and stuff but i think it works well in the frame of you know the story and you know it being a war story you know um you know the humans are down on their luck most of the time against this superior race of alien beings and and things of that nature um i've gotten so currently right now uh there are six collected editions in the macross saga 
Um, I've purchased four of them. I've gotten through one and three quarters of them. And I just started reading this yesterday. So you can tell that it's one of these books where it's like, I, I can't not read it, you know? Um, and so they are going to continue with the story. Um, I believe there is plans, and I, I think there's a pre-order for the Robotech Masters series that's going to be coming out soon for them. So that's something that I think that if you're into Robotech, it's worth, you know, taking a look at. Okay. All right. And you can hear there's somebody outside with a car going crazy out here um, because we are recording from home. I can barely hear it, but. Okay. So then that's a good thing. <laughs> you can scratch that from the thing. It didn't even happen. <laughs> So that's that's my geek out. I, I was I'm geeking out over Robotech. I think Robotech is a uh, is one of those seminal uh, properties. I think it's it's credited as one of the animes that really kind of jump started anime in the Americas. Um, and so you know, like I said, if you're a fan of Robotech, just go into it knowing that. It's going to be, it's not a direct adaptation, but it's more of a retelling of the story. If you've never seen Robotech, I think it's a great way to jump into it. And it's a more modern telling of the story. So I think, um, you know, it's well worth your time and effort. And the good thing is Comicology right, Comicology right now is running a sale. So I got the first the first edition for like six bucks. And it, it basically um, includes like the first 12 issues of the comic. So... This is the perfect time to jump on. All right. There's definitely a car alarm going off in the background by where I'm at. So yeah, if anybody that, hears that, I apologize. Uh, I'll go outside and destroy the car in a few minutes. There you go. Go ahead. Listen, go ahead. Take, go ahead. A, take a Veritech out there and just blast it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm going to take some coffee yogurt and really go to town on it. <clears throat> there you go. All right. All right. So the last piece of this geek out episode is something that Eli um, he kind of alluded to before and that's going to be us re-watching a sci-fi classic and we're watching it on Prime Video and that is the sci-fi show Fringe aka okay. the one show that he does not find corny, corny. all right well, I mean, he said it's corny in a few parts, but when we saw this most recent episode, he said, wow, that is the least corniest thing I have ever seen. I mean, that's not a direct quote, but that's more or less encapsulating what he said. That's the spirit it's of what he said. Completely crazy, at least in my at least in my perspective, because, you know, everything is corny, 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 very yeah. very true. corny. So just to give you guys a, a backdrop on the show itself, um, this is a show, it's a, it's a sci-fi show, and I, I, like I said, in my opinion, it's one of the classics. Um, and this was created by J.J. Abrams. Everybody should know that name, especially if you're into geekdom, because he's been part of some of the most amazing shows on TV, and he has also helmed both the Star Trek and the Star Wars universe, right? And so this thing was on what was Fox. Well, it is, I guess it still is, right? But before Disney. So it was on Fox TV for about five seasons. Um, and it started back in 2008. And it stars um, Anna Torv, uh, Joshua Jackson, and John Noble. And basically, you know, like I said, there's five seasons. We just finished the season finale of season three. So the first season was really kind of like, um, especially the first half of the season, was kind of like a monster of the week type of thing. And so when I was, I had seen it when it first initially ran on TV. They've never seen it before. And I, I was kind of telling them, you've got to watch Fringe because if you're, not, if you're a sci-fi fan, Fringe is got to be number one on your list or at least top five, right? Mm-hmm. And so um, 
the first the first half of the uh, the season of season one is that monster of the week, and they don't really start getting into mythology until the second half. And so I said, okay, I hope you guys can get past it. The first the first season is awesome, but you know if you watch the first part half part of the season, it's just freak of the week. You don't get into the mythology until the second half, and once you get into that, that's when the show really shines, right, guys? Yeah. Sorry, guys. I I just came from the bathroom. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I know. TMI. Too much information. Yeah. yeah. I wouldn't have gathered that until you said it. <laughs> oh yeah. All right. Well, anyway, right. go for it. Now that you're comfortable. Anyway, um. If it if it makes you feel any better, right before this episode started, we had a delay because I had to go to the bathroom. This is stuff that happens in podcasts, to people. So um, it's just one of those things. Continue. Yeah, I have to do my business. Okay. Way too much information. <laughs> yeah, just 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 get to the talk. Okay. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, Fringe actually surprised me because it caught me off guard. It definitely wasn't what I expected from my average sci-fi show um i know andre noticed this but i wasn't really too interested at the very first episode well like i said you have to get like like i said the first the first season is very very good but it really doesn't hit its stride until it starts getting into the bigger the bigger story right i I thought it was just monster of the week type stuff and and i did keep telling you give it a chance right yeah and he he said that the mythology was definitely was exponentially increased um in terms of like um its appearance in the show definitely after season 1 and you won't for me I didn't notice it until the point where it's just the ball drops and everything started like crashing and everything started to flow with each other. And then it all started making sense. The pieces came together. And you won't realize that until you see it. You're going to be very confused as to what they do here. Because get, not giving information right away is definitely what they do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, Andre, do you want to give a quick synopsis of what the story is before, without giving out too much spoilers? So AJ will say that the show is about um, so initially so it follows the uh, it follows Anna Torb's character yeah the, Olivia Dunham yeah unexplained phenomena happens and basically it's the most outlandish stuff that defy physics and it's basically her character along with two other very instrumental characters number one the han solo-esque con man oh my god peter peter bishop Bishop. (laughs) and then you have the wacky kind of gandalf-esque but except with uh science character his father walter bishop and what these three what they do is they kind of unravel these phenomenas as they get hit with them and then you know it builds and builds and builds then you get to that really sweet storytelling point builds and builds and builds even more sweeter story point builds and builds and builds and builds and And that's just basically what it is yeah there, it's there's gonna be a huge twist, but I'm not gonna talk about that. Yeah. And I don't want to hype it up too much. Just watch it, and tell me, or comment, or whatever you guys want to do, and tell us how you like it. That works. I mean, Fringe is like I said. I, I maybe I'm over hyping it, but if you're a sci-fi fan, you really, really need to watch Fringe. This is one of these shows that I know it came out way back when, but you know, for me to start talking about story points, and it, it, it would be a disservice um, to you guys, the audience, for us to talk about it any, in any detail because 
it really is a roller coaster ride that you need to be a part of. Um, there are twists and turns that, you know, I, I think you guys weren't even expecting, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there was one thing that I can say really threw me off kilter that I really didn't like, but that kind of wasn't the show's fault. I thought I had everything. I thought I, I thought I was able to predict it, but trust me, you can be the smartest dude alive, and I, and I can tell you, you are not going to see any of this coming. You are not. And if you think I'm overhyping it, trust me, I am not. I'm probably doing the worst job of hyping it up. Yeah, just, just don't, don't do what I did with Hellraiser and you. Just... No, no, not even that. I haven't. I feel like I, I'm under hyping it. That's why it's not corny. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I'm not giving, I'm, I feel like I'm not hyping it up, up to its fullest. And I don't want to hype it up to its fullest because then who knows? You guys are probably going to get mad depending. I mean, in on fairness, the show came out a while ago at this point. So you wouldn't be you would not be faulted for spoiling a twelve year old television show. I know, I know, and and usually I I would yeah. say that, but like I said, if I'm such a fan of this show that I almost feel it's my duty not to say anything, even though it is a twelve year old show, uh, because I think it's that good, and for the people who are listening to this, who have even the faintest of interest in it um i wouldn't want to take that away from them you know what i mean and normally like i said it's like hey guys this thing has been out like forever if you haven't seen it you know that's on you but i don't know for i I have such a, a love for this show that it's just like you know if you haven't seen it please please go see it you know what i'm saying i don't want to spoil it for you guys yeah. Because it is a journey, and, and it's one that I think it's well worth taking. It's his Breaking and, Bad. Yeah. Yeah, kind of. Kind of, you know. Nothing can be Breaking Bad until you've seen Breaking Bad. <laughs> I know. And I know you're never going to live it down because I told you to go watch Breaking Bad, and I haven't seen it. So well, You have to watch the damn show. All these other shows that are taking away from its attention are, are blasphemy. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds good. Have you I, just out of curiosity, have you seen Fringe? I've only seen a couple of episodes. I know I know about Fringe though. I I you know I struggle watching uh, broadcast TV sometimes. Um but I've heard a lot of things about Fringe and let's let's uh let's also for, not forget that the cast of Fringe is actually pretty impressive. You have Anna Tor Torv, who's in Mindhunter. You have Joshua Jackson, who's been in a number of things, including most recently. Um, he was on um, The Affair on Showtime, which is a yep. really, really well-acclaimed show. John well, my Mo- wife loves that show, by the way. Yeah, like I have a few friends that, that enjoy that show. I've seen the first season of it. It's a good show as well. Uh, John Noble is is really famous. He's been on in a lot of different things from this to Lord of the Rings. I don't know if you yep. guys remember. He was the Mad King. Um, and he plays a great character on French. Great. Yeah, he's character. always he always plays. He's a really good character actor, and you know, going all the way to Lance Riddick, who's one of my favorites from The Wire. And um, oh, and let's not forget, I'm looking at the cast here, and I didn't even know. Oh, I knew about the first. Don't say four. it. Don't don't say it. That's a spoiler. Yeah. I know no, who no, you're talking about. Who? I, no, I, no, think I don't I, know if you do. I'm talking about somebody who was on the show, uh, Twelve Monkeys, who's apparently in this show that I didn't note. And somebody who's a royal. Meghan Markle who's is that? in the cast. I didn't who, know that. Who is that? Meghan said Markle. Royal? Meghan Markle. Like the oh, cool yeah. Freaking oh, yeah, yeah. The, oh, like yeah. the princess. She was in uh, season two, two for like a quick second. Okay. Yeah, she, anyway. she didn't play a major character. She was in like maybe two or three three episodes, I think, right? I'll the cast is solid. No, I've, seen, in there. I've really? seen them all yeah. elsewhere before. Jared Harris is one of my favorites. Apparently, he's in this at some point. I mean, yes. you, you probably get a lot of different episodes with a lot of different characters of the week, like you said, or monsters of the week, freaks of the week. That, that Yeah, th- there's going to be a lot of... Up. There's going to be a lot of recognizable people on that show. 
Um, mm-hmm. Andre, every once in a while, he's like, hey, that person was on Supernatural. Hey, that person was on this and that. So, you know, there's there's people there that you're going to recognize. Yeah. I even um, recognize uh, another actor from, from Mindhunter, the 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 head of the, the of the agency the bald guy from the second season Michael Cerverus apparently is also on this show so you have a mind hunter mm-hmm. double connection here yeah I mean I'm doing my best well I you, you I've been telling you to watch Breaking Bad for about five years so I'll probably watch this about five years from now <laughs> right <laughs> I think right. I think that's fair <laughs> all right yeah. all right all right so right. that's that's it, man. That's what we're geeking yeah. about this uh, out about this week, and it's good to get back. Hold on, hold on, hold what's on. Up? I, wait, I'm wait. gonna have to put a, a stop on this because uh, what's that? What's up? Eli has has something to uh, no Dragon Ball Legends. Add to this. Go for it. I don't want to hear about Omega Shenron. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'll make a Shenron or, or anyone else. <laughs> don't start. Okay, fine. sorry. Well, or last, super last full last power. Time. Goku, Super Saiyan 4, or whatever the frick, or Super Saiyan <laughs> Blue, Super Saiyan God, Super, Super Saiyan Full Power, Saiyan 4, Garbage. Goku. Yeah, SSJ, SSB, oh, okay, SHZ, okay. SSJBD, okay. Z, yeah, like all of it. Yeah. Okay. What's, what's your point? Okay, okay, Kai, anyway. Kaioken Tan. Anyways. <laughs> Who do we want to? Uh, Eli, is, is, this, is this about Dragon Ball Legends? No, no. Is it? We're okay. back to Fringe? Yeah. Okay, okay. no, we're, we're, he's going to finish up Fringe for us. Okay, hold on, hold on. Footnote. <laughs> okay. Go if ahead. you think that Fringe, um, if you think that we weren't hy- hyping it to its fullest, um, here's one more statement, right? There are three fight scenes from season one to season three in mm-hmm. Fringe. Mm-hmm. Three fight scenes? Three fight scenes in total. Okay, okay. So you're saying it's not like yeah. a super action packed show, but you yeah. still enjoy it. There are barely any fight scenes. There, there are a lot of chase scenes, chase. right? Chase. Definitely chase. Yeah. And Tom, despite... Tom Cruise would fit very well in the show. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so he's okay, so he's just running everywhere. Yeah, there's Got there's it. a lot of running and chasing and stuff, you know. <laughs> despite um, that. It's still yeah. really good. And I'm normally someone who looks forward to action in a show. But in a show that's not so much about the action, then that's normally something I'm looking that I'm look actively looking for. It it does really well without it. Yeah. You don't even I didn't even really notice it until like I started realizing, oh shoot, action sheet action scenes aren't really in this. It, it was mean, mind blowing how they. That, how that is me. a very very good point. It reminds me of Anna Torb's other project that I mentioned, which is Mind Hunter, where there's like literally no action at all, like on that show. It's yep. just all talking. So, I guess this I, show is similar. Yeah, and and there's a point in season three where Anna Torv, um channels a character on the show uh, for what two or three episodes, I think, right. And it is one of the most fantastic things that I have ever seen. Right. I'm going to leave it at that. So we we can wrap that this show with that sentiment. All right, all right, all right. Okay, then. So that gets us through another episode of the Get Geek Podcast. Um, as always, I want to thank our fans out there and remind you all, please, to like, rate, share, and subscribe. Look us up wherever your favorite podcasts are sold, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher. Um, and again, you know, the, the ratings the, the, and subscribing to our podcast is something that will really uh, help us to grow and grow our geek community. So... Uh, please do so, and thank you to those of you that have. Congratulations to the winner of our sweepstakes of our of our giveaway. Um, and again, thank you all for bearing with us when it comes to any kind of sound artifacts or any kind of sound issues. Um, thanks to the audience. Thank you guys always. We always appreciate you, and you know you know the drill. As always, stay geeky, my friends. <laughs>